so I've got this big fancy chop saw, miter saw, and uh, although it's uh, got you know some of the best capacity in its class for its size, 90% of the time I want to cut little bits of trim like this, little bits of infill, uh, little bits of capping to go on shelves, and it's a big old lump, even though it's one of the lightest you can get. It's a big old lump to lug around to make cuts that are so fine. Plus, 99% of that work is done in people's houses where I do most of my work in occupied homes. And although the dust collection is good, it's not good enough really to use inside somebody's sitting room. So you're constantly running back and forth inside and outside to make these fine cuts. Now, one of the things I thought I might do is I picked up one of these guys, little uh, Nobex mitre saw, uh, old school, manual, they're great, but again, absolutely no dust collection, and by the time you've got them set up on a board, which you really need for, to make them accurate, um, it's not, it's certainly lighter, but it's not that much smaller than that thing. Uh, plus, a lot of the time I find I need to shave kind of a half a millimetre, tiny fractions of a millimetre off, uh, the end of something just to get a really snug fit and it just isn't very good at doing those sort of cuts. So one of the other things I did, so a little while back I made this. It's a simple little jig designed to take a guide rail and then you can run your saw across it and make straight cuts. Now this one I actually designed to make angle cuts as well, but it was never particularly good for that. Uh, it's not really accurate enough and it's hard to hold the material in there. I made it a little bigger than I needed to as well. I thought I might use it for skirting board, baseboard or, or architrave or trim. Uh, and in fact, I never did. It's almost always for these little skinny bits and pieces. And I was using this the other day and to be honest, it's really not very good now. It's all a bit, it's, it's all a bit battered and bruised. So I thought I'd make another one. In fact, what I've decided to do is make another one that doesn't use a guide rail at all. So what we're going to do with this, we've got uh, a baseboard. This is just made from little bits of scrap, as with all these little jigs of mine. We've got a baseboard which is 18mm, <coughs> excuse me, 18 mil, 3 quarter inch MDF. Um, we've got uh, a couple of little Bits. This is uh, about 44 mil inch and three quarters of half inch plywood. Uh, we've got uh, another little bit of that, a little bit smaller, about 30 mil inch and a quarter. Another piece about sort of seven or eight inches deeper. These are all 12 mil. And then I've got one little piece of six mil quarter inch plywood, and that's been ripped to 16 mil wide so that it will fit exactly into the slot in the base of my saw. And as well as that, we've got a little sort of top piece of, uh, of quarter inch, six mil MDF. So what we're gonna do to start with, we're gonna take our baseboard, our 18 mil MDF. We're just gonna put a, a block in there to keep that nice and snug. And we'll take our top piece. We're just using double sided tape on this. As always, I'm going to let this overhang at the left a little bit. So that's down there nice and snug. We'll just whack in a couple of staples to keep that in place. We need so we know that's square. I'm only ever going to use this for small bits of trim, so I don't need to fit a great deal in there. So we're just going to use an 80mm strip of MDF as a gauge. We'll bring this in place as well. So that's in nice and snug. Again, we'll just pop a couple of staples in there to keep that nice and steady. Put that to one side for a second. Now 
Then we get our six mil. And what we're going to do, we get our saw and we place it approximately where we want it to be. We make a little pencil mark there. And then with a square, we just tack that lightly down. Make sure that's reasonably square. fence bring that in alongside it okay so that's our guide rail the next thing we can do, we can bring our rail out here so that the end overhangs. Clamp it in place. We can trim this flush as well. And while we're in a trimming kind of mood, we'll just cut back the baseboard as well. So we know approximately where we want this to go. We're going to come to it slightly inboard of here, slightly outboard of here. So we can apply a little bit more double-sided tape. A little makeshift fence in there so we can snug everything together. And this just goes in. We know these are square because we cut them square. This is just going to go into there. Nice and square like that. And there you go. Now it's simplicity itself. To just set the depths about right. Cut through what's left of the fences and that's it you know exactly where your cut line is going to be so anytime you want to cut a little bit of trim you just line it up Make well that's it for this week's video, I hope you found it useful, I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly find these useful, a very simple little jig to make, uh, costs you know next to nothing, just pennies and off cuts and whatever bits of scrap you have. Um, they're, they're great things to have around. I've made a few of these and you know when they wear out 
or if you lose them you just make another one um, if you've enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up share it freely amongst your friends and please do consider subscribing then you'll be notified whenever i post something new uh, but that's it for now uh, i hope to see you next time take care